Hello and welcome to this uh, video lecture in the course for Secure Systems Engineering. Uh, in the previous lectures uh, in this particular course, uh, we had looked at uh, malware and we had talked about a lot of techniques uh, by which malware could affect uh, the system and also how uh, these malware could uh, actually be prevented. Uh, but uh, all of these uh, discussions were related to malware which affects the software of the computer system. In uh, today's video lecture, we would talk about malware uh, which is present in the hardware. So these are popularly known as hardware trojans and uh, this would be the topic of discussion uh, in this particular video. A lot of what I am going to be talking about is uh, present in this book. Uh, hardware Security, uh, Design, Threats and Safeguards by uh, Professor Devdi Mukhopadhyay and uh, Rajat Shubra Chakrabarti from IIT Karakpur. Uh, also I have used slides from uh, Dr. Adam Wakesman and uh, J. Vijan Rajendran from Texas A&M. So essentially what are hardware trojans? So hardware trojans are uh, essentially trojans which are inserted right at the hardware. So uh, you could for example have a processor and small additional hardware module present in the processor which is inserted at uh, during the design time would act as a hardware trojan. So these hardware trojans are uh, since they are present right at the hardware uh, in the system they cannot be detected by uh, techniques such as the antivirus uh, solutions which are present or uh, the various other techniques that we uh, discussed uh, all of the like the confinement uh, techniques the OKWS uh, the trusted execution environment all of these things will not work and will not be able to prevent uh, trojans which are inserted right at the hardware. So uh, these hardware uh, trojans are uh, typically passive hardware components present in your processor or uh, any other device and these hardware trojans can potentially alter the uh, functionality of the hardware device. So uh, hardware trojans have uh, now become quite popular in the last uh, decade or so and uh, it is extremely difficult to actually find ways uh, to detect the presence of hardware trojans present in a particular device. So what exactly constitutes a hardware trojan? So uh, very much like the trojans present in software, a hardware trojan comprises of two components. One is a trigger circuit uh, and the other is a pay payload. The difference between uh, a hardware trojan compared to the uh, trojans which are present in the software is that the hardware trojan is uh, inserted uh, in the device itself uh, right at the hardware in most cases completely independent of all the software layers that are uh, running on this particular processor. These hardware trojans are uh, typically passive they may just comprise of a few set of gates uh, which typically are not uh, do not operate and do not actually modify uh, the output of the device and therefore they are very difficult to detect. A typical hardware trojan would wait for a specific trigger to occur and once that trigger uh, comes uh, then a specific payload uh, gets executed. Now this payload uh, essentially could modify the functionality of the device. Uh, the hardware uh, the trigger uh, could be of several forms as we will see uh, during uh, these lectures. Uh, for instance a trigger could be a specific input uh, given by a user or uh, which is obtained from a network or uh, a specific address which comes on the address bus such as the uh, case over here where uh, the address bus is has uh, 0x uh, dead beef. Uh, so these specific uh, trigger inputs is what actually causes the hardware trojan to uh, wake up and then execute the payload uh, like this. So the payload very similar to that of uh, the software trojans would do something malicious. For example, it could leak 
uh, some secret information uh, to the outside world say through the network uh, interface or through covered channels uh, it could uh, make a page in memory which is uh, say in the kernel space uh, this page could be modified uh, to become accessible from the user space and therefore a user process would be able to actually read uh, protected data present in the system or if you have something like uh, say uh, a trusted execution environment a hardware trojan would be could possibly disable this entire uh, trusted execution or compromise the entire trusted execution such that a normal untrusted application would be able to uh, observe or modify the uh, execution of the trusted environment Al alternatively uh, the payload could do anything maliciously uh, for example it could also cause the entire system to fail so uh, let's take a simple example of uh, a hardware trojan so the uh, example we would take is a crypto device so we can you can consider this as a uh, integrated circuit that is an ic and within this ic we have a crypto module a secret key which is stored in within this particular ic so what this device does is that it takes the, an input uses the key uh, and uh, feeds these two into the crypto module uh, does an encryption and then uh, produces a cipher text so what we see is that as long as the uh, key is kept secret and well concealed within the device the cipher text does not contain any information about uh, the corresponding input now what could happen is during the design or manufacture of this particular device developer could insert a hardware trojan so we'll just take a small example of how a specific hardware trojan can be inserted and what the functionality of this hardware trojan could be so uh, we see that uh, a hardware trojan like this can be inserted which takes a trigger uh, which acts as a select line to a multiplexer and then we have a mux so what the multiplexer does is that uh, it either passes on the uh, cipher text uh, which is computed by the crypto module whenever the trigger has a value of 0 or alternatively if the trigger has a value of 1 then the key gets transmitted uh, to the output thus we see that uh, the secret data stored secretly or concealed in the device is visible at the output so in this particular example what we see is that uh, we have this trigger and uh, the payload over here and this payload is actually causing uh, sensitive or secret data uh, to be exposed uh, to outside the device. Now uh, we look at two properties of a typical hardware trojan. The first thing is that the hardware trojan is uh, extremely small. Notice that you could have a very a uh, large crypto module and uh, the device could be extremely complex but what we notice is that uh, the additional modifications uh, due to the hardware trojan is extremely small all that is required is just uh, a few multiplexers in this particular case and a trigger signal the objective of making the hardware trojan extremely small is the fact that it's very difficult uh, to actually detect uh, such a hardware trojan uh, while uh, for example uh, viewing the code or uh, or just looking at the device it's very uh, difficult given the size and the number of transistors and gates present in the device uh, this additional hardware present due to the hardware trojan may may easily go unnoticeable second and an important property of a hardware trojan is that the hardware trojan is mostly passive uh, so for example over here uh, we have shown a combinational uh, trojan so this combinational trojan uses a cheat code to trigger so uh, in this uh, particular trigger what happens is that the input is tapped and goes into this trigger circuit and uh, this particular trigger waits for precisely one specific uh, input to appear um, when this uh, input appears um, it provides an output of 1 so let's say for example uh, the input line is of 128 bits and 
Therefore, the possible number of inputs is 2 power 128. Now, since the trigger is waiting precisely for one uh, cheat code, in this case uh, 0x cafe beef, uh, to actually activate uh, the uh, payload. Therefore, in most of these cases, this hardware trojan is going to uh, be passive. It is only when this specific uh, input appears uh, to the device would the trigger be activated and uh, the payload uh, be used to uh, leak out the secret key. Now the entire design methodology of a hardware trojan is that this cheat code cafe beef is only known to the attacker but not to any other uh, person who is uh, designing or using this particular IC. Thus, during uh, testing or during various tests or during normal operation of this device, the probability that a user actually finds an input uh, cafe beef uh, is extremely small. For example, in our uh, case where we assume that the input is of uh, 128 bits, the probability that a valid user or a designer during the testing of this device actually finds such a trigger cheat code is 1 by 2 to the power of 128 which is an extremely uh, small probability and therefore highly unlikely that such trigger cheat codes uh, would not appear during the regular testing or usage of the device. However, uh, since the attacker knows about uh, what the cheat code is whenever required the attacker could actually feed uh, this specific cheat code to the input uh, of the device and uh, then activate the uh, hardware trojan because by uh, the cheat code would force the select line to 1 and thereby uh, passing on the secret key uh, to the output of the device. So you may have also noticed that this uh, trigger where which waits for a specific input uh, to appear is just one uh, example of a trigger. There may be many other ways by which uh, such triggers can be actually designed. Another very popular way of uh, uh, designing the triggers which is even more difficult to uh, detect is something known as uh, time bombs or sequential trojans. So what we have over here is uh, a state machine. In this sequential trojan the trigger is uh, waiting for a specific sequence of inputs to appear. Now, uh, uh, this sequence for example, C A is an input which is followed by A F and after some time there is an E E, uh, then uh, after some time there is a B E and then an E F would finally activate the trojan and force the secret key to be visible at the output. So internally this trigger would have a, a state machine like this where uh, typically the select line would be having a value of 0 and based on uh, the various input sequence which would uh, trigger this uh, particular trojan. The state machine would move through several states and eventually reach a state where the select line uh, becomes 1 activating the trojan. So you see that uh, this sequential trojan may be more difficult uh, to actually detect compared to the uh, cheat code or the combinational trigger that we uh, discussed. The reason being that these sequential values could either appear consequently or could be spread over several clock cycles and therefore uh, the probability that, that such a sequential trigger is actually detected is much more smaller. Now uh, these two properties of a hardware trojan that being very small and also mostly passive makes hardware trojans extremely difficult to detect. The detection of hardware trojan has uh, is a very hot topic uh, of research especially in the last decade or so and uh, there have been several interesting papers and uh, techniques uh, th that have been uh, discussed and presented in order to detect uh, such hardware trojans. Uh, in this uh, video lecture and perhaps the next as well, we would uh, discuss uh, two such techniques. Uh, one is known as FANCY. And uh, the other one is a technique by which we could uh, design a, de a circuit or rather design a particular hardware unit where inserting a trojan would be considerably more difficult. Another aspect which complicates the detection of a hardware trojan is the fact that 
a trojan can be inserted in the hardware at multiple uh, places during the design cycle. So, what we see in this particular slide uh, is a typical way IC is designed and manufactured. So, typically uh, if a, a company wants to actually design and manufacture a, a new IC, uh, it would start off with the specifications uh, for that IC. So, for example, you could say uh, you, you could think of uh, a, a new communication com controller or uh, let us say uh, a new cryptographic uh, accelerator or so on. So, uh, this particular company would uh, start off with actually writing the specifications for that particular um, hardware IC. So, then once the specifications are written it goes to a design phase and uh, during this design phase there will be uh, a lot of coders uh, that uh, are used. In addition to these uh, codes, uh, a lot of third party uh, IPs are also integrated into the design. Uh, a lot of uh, models and standard cell libraries are used and all of these are integrated using several EDA tools. Now, uh, then we have a process of uh, uh, fabrication. Uh, it goes to the uh, a fabrication unit, there is a masking. Uh, then there is a uh, dice and packaging, then there is a package test and finally, a deployment and monitoring. So, what we see is that a typical IC design and manufacturer has several of these steps. The company that is uh, designing and manufacturing this uh, specific IC is not the only one which is involved and there are a lot of third party tools and uh, uh, units which are uh, also involved during the design and manufacture of a particular IC. So, typically uh, the IP cores uh, are uh, bought from a third party. The tools used uh, for uh, designing of that particular IC is also brought uh, from third parties as well as the standard cells. Similarly, most companies use an offshore fabrication unit uh, to actually design and develop these ICs. Now, out of all of these various uh, steps and uh, organizations involved during the design and manufacture of an IC, the only steps which are completely trusted is this step where the specifications are uh, written, the package testing that is done after the chip is uh, fabricated and uh, the deployment and uh, monitoring of the chip. So, besides these three uh, steps in the entire process, uh, Trojans can be inserted in any of the other steps. For example, a programmer who is an adversary can insert a Trojan uh, during the design phase or IP cores that are brought from third parties may also have in them uh, certain uh, Trojans which are not easily detectable. Similarly, tools and libraries like standard cells may uh, force uh, Trojans to be inserted into the device. In addition to the design phase, once the uh, design is actually sent out for uh, manufacture, the offshore manufacturing companies may also insert uh, Trojans in the device. Thus, uh, due to the fact that hardware Trojans can be actually inserted in many different stages during the development and manufacture of the IC, it becomes extensively uh, difficult to um, detect uh, such Trojans or for that matter actually it is very expensive to actually design ICs where Trojans are not present. So, in the next uh, video lecture, we will uh, take one example of a tool uh, which is known as FANCY and uh, we will show how FANCY is able to potentially detect locations within a design of a hardware where hardware tro uh, Trojans may potentially be inserted. Thank you.